Hmm? We've already read this. Oh! Real quick, before we end things off, the next update is coming on March, March 5th. That is huge. March 5th is actually closer than it seems because you gotta remember, February only has 29 days, so we end the month slightly earlier. So we have, it's actually just like what, four days? No, six days, six days, six days away. Anyways, what is happening? The major additions in version 4.3.0 planned for release on March 3rd. Oh shit, oh my, this is such a big update guys, honestly. Number one, the compile combat manual feature is being added. You will be able to compile combat manuals using items called divine codes. You have gotten divine codes from Mjolnir Strike and soon you'll be able to get them from Arena. So that's pretty big. This is huge. This is like a way to get like skills, merges, and this is without using orbs. You just have to play the game. This is a huge addition to the game, very free to play friendly. One of probably the best thing to come out of this shit show of a third year fate anniversary. So I'm really glad about that. I just can't wait to see what exactly are we getting. Anyways, divine codes come in various forms, including beige colored divine codes part one and crimson colored divine codes uh, ephemera? I can't say it. Divine codes ephemera. I'll just say EP, are only available for a limited time. So right, you have divine codes that progress and divine codes that are limited. It was shown off in the trailer as such, so this hasn't changed. Divine codes part one. Divine codes of part one moniker can be used to create normal combat manuals. Tap allies then compile the normal to view the list of combat manuals that you can compile. You must unlock the combat manuals in each path in order from left to right. Note that you may set down whichever path you like and may switch to another path partway through. Yeah, so they're gonna give you a bunch of different paths and apparently the paths will be based on games then. I'm assuming this is the final product because it doesn't make any sense not to do that at this point. This is pretty big, uh, huge if anything. You can see it right now. Not only do you have say the Radiance Path, not only do you have like unique special heroes like Valencia, uh, Hoshido in Valencia, it's the da dancer version. She has like a really unique, I believe she has Cloud Mayogi and she has what, attack, speed, push? I'm not completely, this is off the top of my head, but Cloud Mayogi is a really top notch um, dagger, anti-dragons. So that's really interesting. And not to mention you also have Leith, who has, it shows it off, Speed Res Solo and um, Hone, Hone Beasts. And at the end of all that, you have Grail with Fury 4. That's huge, guys. But the costs, my god, the costs are huge. Wow. It takes 2,000 Divine Codes for the final, oh my goodness. For the final piece of the path, it's 2,000 Divine Codes. This also confirms that you're only allowed to get like one Comet Manual. You can't just repeatedly get the same same hero's Comet Manual. So for example, if I had Elise and I wanted to max out her merges, I couldn't, I can't go here, like depending on this to max her out. I can get one copy, but not an infinite amount of copies. So they're gonna give us a certain amount of paths based on games, I would assume, and then we can only get one copy of them each and it builds up to each. So real quick, let me check how many codes I have. I currently have, I have 3k grails at this point. I currently have 772 codes. Are you? Are you kidding me? How long has Mjolnir Strike been out guys? How long have we been playing it for? 2000? Who the heck is going to make it to 2000? You guys have already totaled it for me. 5600 papers to max out a path oh oh boy that's insane but yeah there are some insane fodder here but this is a bit crazy as it stands all this time that we've spent in these game modes right now only factors into maybe one maybe two heroes at max like two points uh two steps into a path damn now, they did say in the future we'll get it through Arena as well, but this is, this is a lot of work. I think this is, this is even more difficult than um, grilling up a hero to plus 10, I would say. Crazy. 
All right, you will receive 1500 Divine Codes Part 1 when you enter the complete screen for the first time. Divine Codes Part 1 can be obtained as tier rewards in Mjolnir Strike. In addition, with the season starting on March 3rd at 2 a.m., they will also be available as rank rewards in Ether Raids and tier rewards in Arena. Now, granted, so far we've only gotten them from Mjolnir Strike, but as they mentioned in the last update, it'd be in Arena, and now they've mentioned it will be in Ether Raids. Additionally, we're, we're going to get a bonus amount of 1500 So, at least for the first to start things off, they're starting it off properly. To give you 1500 Divine Codes, and then putting into all these different modes does alleviate the pain of it. But after that's expired, it still takes a very long time to reach 2000 guys. So maxing out a path, taking 5,600 pages or codes, uh, you, you gotta pick your path. But at the same time, like getting Fury 4, that's something pretty valuable. That's like a, a tier four skill or a max tier skill man that could change up characters that can complete characters so it's good it's a lot of work and it's going to be worth it you just gotta be smart about it but yeah divine codes are a good thing additionally divine codes e ep i'll just say that with the ep moniker can be used to create limited time comment manuals tap allies and compile the limited time to view the list of comment manuals that you can compile you are free to choose whichever comment manual you wish to compile without worrying about unlocking paths so this is limited and it will reset, I believe, and you only have a few, um, you will get a special code for this and it will reset. Now, the reason why this is really good is because, oh man, you can see it. It's really inexpensive relatively. So just 100 codes can get you Shanna, for example, and that is Desperation Fodder, or 300 codes to get you uh, Spring Kagero, which, which is huge. Bunny Kongro for me, for example. You know, I got a bad IV one when I first pulled for her. So if I could get a chance at, at just fixing her IVs, I would totally use her. Minus speed on her is just disastrous. But if I can turn that into just plus res, that's usable at that point. So yeah, that's that's pretty damn huge. I do like that, that they're allowing limited heroes P. I'm 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 hoping so badly for PA Azura. Oh my god, I have a minus speed plus attack P Azura. If she ever shows up here, I would be able to fix her, though she has no good fodder. But then again, not really, Kagura doesn't really have good fodder either. You know, she can help you get more like, more badges, I guess, but it doesn't really make a difference. Same thing with like, you know, Bunny, um, Bunny Camilla. It wouldn't really change up, it wouldn't really be for top, top fodder, but it's more for merges. Either way, I like that too. They have two kind of divine codes to get. The type of divine codes available and the line of limited time combat manuals and change with each with each game version. So every every update they will change this up. In version 4.3.0, divine codes AP, EP3 may be obtained. And for me, instantly, the limited time combat manuals that can be compiled with divine codes EP3 earned in version 4.3 are listed below. For me, instantly, that means Kagro. I gotta get that Kagro. Spring Princess Camilla, I I would go for the limited heroes. Like if you really need a Shanna, for example, for desperation, I pick her up. If I have 700 codes, I would pick up Camilla, Kagro, and Shanna. Nothing else. Soleil, Soleil has Drive Res, which is a pretty decent C skill. And if you need Soleil merges, but honestly, nowadays I'd su suggest it's key. Yeah, it's key mostly. Astrum as well, but it's key mostly. Oscar has a dual rally. Shanna is probably the most valuable with Desperation. Bars has become a pretty good hero, and he also has Reposition. But he has become a pretty good hero with his Devil Axe Refine. And Sylvia... Sylvia, people need Sylvia merges as well. She's a pretty ideal hero for Ether Raid, so that's pretty good. Oh shit, there's more! <laughs> Alright, anyways, Divine Code's EP from a particular game version may only be used to compile limited time comment manuals until 28th of the following of the month following that version's release. For example, the limited time comment manuals listed may, above may be compiled using Diva, Divine Code's EP3 until... Yeah. So Divine Code's EP can be obtained from various events in the future. However, one version's Divine Code's EP cannot be converted out of another. For example, Divine Code EP3 cannot be converted into Divine Code EP4. In other words, you gotta use all your Divine Codes anyways. So... Yeah, just go get the limited heroes, I would say, and any fodder you would want. So yeah, since it expires and cannot be used in the next version, gotta use them all. But let's move on to what's more important. Oh my god, Owen's getting refined. 
Oh. Oh. But it's World of Three Show Owen, unfortunately. Normal Owen needs it. But it's like a conundrum. Because if you were fine, Dire Thunder, technically Reinhardt should receive it, but that would really mess things up. But I need normal Owen to get her refined. Anyways, World of Thracia Owen, Thunderhead. If you guys don't know what Thunderhead is, it's basically Grom Blade, but without the cooldown limitations and with slightly more attack. So it's it's actually improved Grom Blade. If you have Owen, I hope you kept her. Because she's always been really good. But most people kill her off for a Swiss Barrel or whatnot, I believe. That's what she had. So yeah, but no, it's huge that she's getting refined. This is one of the underrated Blade Tome heroes in the game. Unfortunately, it was really hard for people to get her, and and you know, there's just that stigma about her. But if you think about it, she's really easy to buff up. You just need a hero of home cav and a hero of uh, four or five cav, and then she's maxed out. Anyways, other heroes. Uh, let's start with Yagen. Oh, wait. Is uh, is is Mr. Mewtwo here? He would love this. Strone would absolutely love Jaegen's Refine. If you guys haven't seen Strone's, he's maxed out Jaegen and he's doing all kinds of weird builds on him. Um, I'm glad Jaegen's getting refined. Incredibly underrated hero. He actually could get pretty high defense, pretty high res. His speed is kind of, eh, it's really pretty bad. His attack's pretty bad, his HP is, is okay. But he he actually can get to a pretty good defensible point and then just rely on them. Um, rely on QR to get the uh, QR and a fast special to get the kills. Now he gets a veteran lance and who really knows what that could be. Anyways, he deserves this. If anyone has ever played Shadow Dragon, you start the game with Yagen. He's like one of your few promoted heroes immediately in the game at the start. So I'm glad for him. Will this really change things up? I highly doubt it. I've like very rarely ever seen Yagen's like almost never. Nobody ever really uses him, but that's a huge, huge change, man. I'm I'm glad for him. Anyways, yeah. I hope I hope he's getting used more than four or five cav in the future. Other than that, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Gray. Gray. Wait. I don't care about gray. I have a gray, but I don't care about gray. Tobin! I meant Tobin! That's crazy. Oh, everybody, do you remember when you first got Tobin and how disappointed you were that he was an Archer Tobin and he was kind of shitty? All he had was Armor Smasher and everyone just used him in like Arena Assault because he had Armor Smasher. Holy crap. He's finally getting updated. Jubilant Blade. I'm willing to bet that's just going to be effective against armor, but something else on top of it. But it's going to have more might. Anyways, I still use Tobin in, in Arena Assault because there's so many armors. They're just... They're everywhere. Having Tobin and having a bit more might and a, and a special effect on top of that would be awesome. If it remains effective against armor, which it should. So yeah, Tobin getting refined is huge. You all have Tobins. I hope you didn't like kill him off for Pivot or something. Because I know people killed him off for like the worst skills that he has. Did he have like attack plus three or def or defense plus three or something like that as well? Anyways, people killed him off for like... He had no good fodder and nobody wanted to use him, but and people killed him off, so... There was a lot of hating on Tobin, so... He has attack plus three, right. Yeah. It was that bad at one point. Now those people can regret it, because Tobin... Tobin! Tobin should become useful with this. Either way, you have him and he gets a refine, and it just takes some SP, so... No reason not to take it. Anyways, laid, black, laid back blade with gray. Honestly, I don't know enough about gray. I believe he is just anti calves. Notice how I don't even have his weapon equipped because I have him sword valor just to earn more SP. That's all I cared about him, sword valor. So I take off his sword and just train with that. Yeah, he's just anti cav with Zambato. But yeah, other than that, sword valor, wind boost. He was not a good hero. Don't like there was no point to him. Anyways, with that said. He's also getting updated, so I hope he comes good. His attack is lackluster, his everything's lackluster to be honest, so maybe that makes him useful. Most likely with what we know about weapon refines, he's going to remain effective against calves. Unfortunately, that's not like the most useful thing, but whatever. I, I guess I guess we'll see if it, it's actually the case. Given he actually... I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't played Echoes, so I don't really know if he has a unique weapon in that game, but I hope it's good for his sake. Anyways, moving on. 
Ether Raids and Ether Raids Resort are being updated. Some structures will have the level cap increased. Infantry School up to 7. Yeah. All the schools are up to level 7 at, at this point. Also, Ether Resort is being updated. Three new songs. Let's Go Leaf from Fire Emblem 3 Chess 776. The Tastic Hand from Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. And People of the Marketplace from Fire Emblem Three Houses. People of the Marketplace. That's actually a pretty good song. Uh, if anything, it's just... It's nice. It's nice. It's just like nice background music. Anyways, Mjolnir Strike is being updated. Some mechanisms will have their level cap increased. Don't prefer Briar up to level 4. Who cares? And then, and then, and then the big thing! The following heroes will be available to summon using Heroic Grills. Trevant, King of Thracia. Now that we know Altina has demoted, just uh, go for Altina. But no, it's Itsuki! That is my next plus 10 hero. That is my next plus 10 hero. The moment he comes up, I have 3,300 grails. The moment he comes up, I am maxing out Itsuki. That, that is mine. That is my guy. I, I'm, I'm, I can't wait. I can't wait. Itsuki, Itsuki's almost here. Oh, just six more days. All right. But Itsuki, if you guys didn't know, really unique hero in this game. He's one of those heroes with session skills and depending on session, whether he's the first attack or the first to be attacked, he gets more attack or more defense. I believe that was the case. It's been a while since I saw Itsuki. Um, and we actually have an Itsuki showcase coming up to show you guys about all the nice Itsukis we've seen over the time. But yeah, he's a really unique hero. He's also effective against dragons. Um, he's pretty good defensively. His defense and res are pretty um, equal. And he can even reach like about mid 30s, uh, mid 40s in, in defense thanks to his Soon I'll finally have my merges for my speed Itsuki. <laughs> and technically he can become a speed Itsuki, but he's like low 30s in speed. So. And he hits really hard. Anyways, Itsuki's just a really good hero. Um, a potential tanker, potential anti-dragon hero. He's a really good hero. I would suggest him for like arena, arena assault. And he's a good, great point bank because he can reach 175 BST with a merge. Anyways, he's one of the most unique looking heroes in this game because he's from TMS. And Tokyo Mirage Sessions is not really like a Fire Emblem game if you ever played it. You know, they, they put in some elements in Fire Emblem, but it's not really a Fire Emblem game. So as a result, he doesn't look like any any other character in this game other than his TMS um, patri compatriots. That's actually an incorrect word. Co-stars? They're, the, they're from the same studio. Same um, agency. Anyways, I can't wait. He's my next plus 10 hero. Additionally, the co quest completion counter shown above questing missions on the home screen will no longer include completed Fey Pass quests for players who are not subscribed to the Fey Pass. Oh my god! Do you finally realize how much you fucked that up, IS? You shitty, shitty people. Do you not realize how difficult you've made it for people who have OCD? Every single time I logged in for the first couple of weeks, I was like, oh, wow, I have more quests to complete. I click. Oh, wait, I've completed all the quests. Oh, look, there's an orb. Oh, look, I can't have it. For some people, this drove them to like quitting. Like it was, the game became unbearable for people. So thank friggin' goodness that they realized they fucked it up, and now they've removed it. Good job, morons. Anyways, this is another emission of being like retards. I don't even want to use these words to be honest. Like I want eyes to be smart, but I swear they don't want to be successful. Like, could they not tell how harsh this is? How dumb it is? How shoving this in the faces of players is a bad idea. Whatever. I've had enough rants on the Fae Pass. Thank goodness you've realized a little bit of your stupidity and just removed it. It's still going to be like everywhere though. Every time you go to Training Stratum, it'll remind you about it. Every time you go to like Summer Support, it'll remind you about it. Every time you go to like Forging Bonds. It's still everywhere, but at least it's not in the quest section. I s it'll probably still show up with Fae Pass quests immediately as well. I don't know. It's stupid. Thank goodness for that change. And the no dual skill animation option will be added to settings. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to skip that. Um, you can't thus far, but you can in the future. Anyways, that's all the news about the next update for now. We hope you continue to enjoy playing Fire Emblem Heroes. I think you should write more than that. In the past month so many people quit this game oh my god i've had so many friends quit this game over the past month anyways whatever let's not talk about that 
oh, the fate pass still drives me insane. Anyways, divine codes, uh, weapon refines, it's key. It's a overall pretty good update coming soon on March, March 5th.